Welcome to the Money GPS. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. What if I told you that China's real estate problems have become even more concerning? I'm going to show you everything you need to know in this one video. So we will take it back beginning with this. The Chinese property market is likely the largest asset class in the world. It's $62 trillion. So they have every reason to keep it propped up. So I'm going to help you here understand if you haven't heard about this before, but we had a huge problem in China's real estate sector where one after the other after the other companies that were developing all these massive buildings and basically cities and city blocks and so on, well, they started to fail. And this was one after another of cascading problems. So many different things. They used, I don't want to call it a Ponzi, but they used these different ways to bring more income in so that they could fund the next project doing all kinds of wild and crazy things. I, I covered that in previous videos before. But I understand that this was a completely unsustainable model. And then as soon as 2020 hit, as soon as they didn't have everything moving at lightning speed, then everything stopped. All of their income sources started to dissipate. They couldn't pay their workers. They couldn't engage in the same things that they were doing before. And then everything started to tumble. The whole property sector started to feel it. Now, what did they do? A company like Evergrande, the one with the most debt, well, that company started to drop massively. And what did they do? Well, they halted the stock. You know, if you want to prevent the bank run from happening, just close the bank. Call a bank holiday, right? Well, that kind of thing is a temporary, I don't want to call it a solution, but certainly it fixes their problems. And so we see this right now going on at this time getting Worse, I covered this in a recent video. More Chinese homebuyers refuse to pay their mortgage loans amid contagion fears. They're saying, look, I saw what happened over there. That building never got built. So why am I paying into this thing? It hasn't even been built yet. And that's causing an issue. Bank stocks fell on concern property crisis is spreading. Projects facing mortgage snubs more than tripled since Monday. Now, is this the entire 62 trillion? Of course not. But it is a problem. It doesn't have to be, you know, all 62 trillion for it to be an issue. It can even be such a small percentage. Think about subprime. At the peak of subprime, how much of it was the total? It really wasn't that much. And especially if you extrapolate that and understand the subprime crisis was the spark that created basically the entire financial crisis. Look at what happened all around the world, not just property, but basically everything else stemming from that one spark. You could see it here. China's bank exposure to mortgages is high. We know that. But the actual total number of people not paying, that isn't high. And okay, we need to understand that. I want to make that clear. But you see what's happening. Very, very obvious. Very, uh, just, just get this, okay? The $62 trillion problem that China has. And you see some of that slowly but surely is really dealing with a huge crisis. And it's the entire property sector at one level or another engaging in... You know, they're basically in defense mode right now. Banks slump. Chinese lenders fell to a two-year low on property contagion fears. And you witness that right here and right now. This is showing us this year. And after having come up quite a bit in March, after falling, well, here you see it, taking a nosedive. China mortgage boycott may tighten escrow rules. Some home buyers have stopped payments on their stall projects. Developers' liquidity poised to be further pressured. And you see this at the time in which it's pretty obvious what happens here. You have one problem with one company or one small part of the sector, and it starts to have this shockwave type effect. 
the wave of Chinese home buyers not paying their mortgages on stalled projects will add pressure to the developers' liquidity by weakening pre-sales and restricting use of consumers down customers' down payment. You see what happens here? Oh, you give me that down payment. Now I'm gonna go put that into this project or that project. But what happens if they say, no, I'm not doing it anymore. I'm not paying another dime. Well, now they don't have money to fund that other project and things start to slow down rapidly. That's happening in China today. You could see what happened with the GDP, okay? Year over year, down, 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 okay? It got smashed. Not quite to the levels of early 2020, but I mean, it's not healthy. And you could see where it had been over the years anyway. It, it is on a declining trend. Now the estimate for June is that it would come back up, okay? So it went down from around zero, and supposedly that's going to come back up 4.73. I don't know. I don't know what the real numbers would ever be there, but here we are anyway. So you can look at the numbers in general, um, basically peaking out around, you know, depending on the stat, middle of uh, middle of 2021, excuse me, the middle of 2021. And they've just been coming out ever since. What are we talking about? GDP, industrial production, retail sales, fixed asset investment, property investment. All of those have been coming down, okay? So what does that show us? Weakening consumers, sentiment. The consumer is basically saying, ah, you know what? I don't need this. I'm getting out. I'm just going to tap out or I'm going to reduce my expenses altogether. China studies ending Australia coal ban on supply fear. All of this. I showed you initially when this came out and, you know, they, they had basically shipments coming in and they were saying, okay, stop it right there. Like it was kind of like a spur of the moment decision, it seemed like. Officials worried Russia coal sanctions to spark fuel shortages, Beijing to look to looking to avoid a repeat of 2021's power disruptions. So they're basically saying, you know, maybe we'll shake hands with Australia in this case here. And this is very good for Australia. So my friends in Australia, you know, uh, you know, this is obviously going to be positive for the country in terms of exports. Historic highs in 2020, global debt experienced the largest surge in 50 years. So the debt problem is not a China problem. It's a global problem. You see, looking around the world, every country has basically done the same thing. You can look at Switzerland, you can look at Japan, you can look at, you know, whatever. In, we'll talk about Chile in just a second here, I think. Uh, Panama, excuse me. Panama. What's going on? All of these countries increased the amount of money that they pump into the system dramatically. Dramatically. And it's coming at a time in which, you know, after the 1940s, you know, that situation in the 1940s, um, it's like more than that. But... What was happening? What was going on? Some very unusual things. And the expenditures, you could argue, were really, really unjustified. It's many of the expenditures, I mean, just sending out cash, they found the details out there. that They literally found billions and billions. I forget the percentage. Uh, maybe I covered it here before, but I definitely read the articles that were saying, the amount of money that was just swindled, it was sent overseas and all this from the PPP loans. Oh my goodness. It's shocking to say the least. I mean, I don't, I don't know how they could have ever gotten away with it. But anyway, so look at this. Panama, on its fourth day of protests by their people against their government. Time to take back our governments and so on. So they talk about that here and this. Panama goes out to protest high fuel prices and corruption. And this is many, actually, there's many in here. I think it was this one. Yeah, you can see what they're doing. Looking at this right now, I mean, people aren't happy. But are you noticing a pattern here? Is it just Panama? Is it just one country or another? Of course not. Of course not. Everybody is upset globally. And this is something that we should be paying attention to because it's going to affect us all. What's happening here? Just like in Manhattan, where now the average rent is $5,000 insanity. 
the prices of everything are going up and we have reached the breaking point. This is something interesting. All of those who are interested in real estate, check this out. Nearly 836,000 multifamily units are under construction. That's the most since 1973. But most new construction targets the higher income tenants and not the lower end where the supply shortages are more extreme. Affordability is not a major headwind yet in the market rate rental sector, but it could quickly become one if wage growth slows. And with that recession coming on, I think that might be an issue. Okay, so you can see that here. And, you know, I'm going to end it there just to let you know of what's happening, what's going on in China, what's happening overall, because it's like I said, it's not a China problem specifically, it's everywhere. And so we extrapolate that information. We take what we have and we extrapolate and we start to see this is an issue all over the place. And I hope that I've made my points clear. You know, the way I look at it, it's hard for me to, to give you that information. But when we see it, and the way it's laid out here, you, you have so much debt. And then you increase interest rates. And you've got inflation on top of that. And you've got corruption. And you've got all these different things adding up. We've got an issue. So what can we do? Well, never, number one, never expose yourself to any of these risks if you can help it. Okay, You don't want to get into that. You want to keep your investments safe and sound. You want to protect yourself and your household in every way imaginable. So take the steps today to do what you have to do because we never know what's coming tomorrow. It is a lot of uncertainty. We could see what's going on in Panama. We can look at what's going on in the other countries, but... We never really know until it hits us in the face, and it's usually too late. So take the time today to prepare. That's my message. If you appreciate it, hit that thumbs up button. All right, that supports the channel. I do appreciate that very much. And don't forget to join the perpetual 282,000 subscribers here. We call it the 282 crew. And so I'll see you on the next one. Take care.